grip on the outside, but it's not enough to, you know, keep your hand from getting too hot from drinking coffee in the car or something like that. So, yeah. uh, what you got there, that sounds pretty awesome. Well, welcome, Erica, to the coffee hour. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh. All right, so uh, keep it on with the news stuff until until about twelve thirty. Uh, which one of you guys are going to be um, with your finger on the buy button come next next week when that presumably iPad three gets announced? No, I, I don't have any of them yet. You know, I have the iPad two, and um, of course, with all the rumors that are flying around with a better looking screen, uh, a, retina, a large Retina display, um, I assume it'll probably have similar battery life. They say it'll be a slightly thicker, but um, I think the only reason I would see anybody uh, be interested in actually getting it is for the screen as well as for uh, the possibility of having a nicer camera, because supposedly the rumors are saying that um, it's going to have the same camera as what's on the iPhone 4S. Oh, I thought you were going to say the iPad 2. I was going to say no. <laughs> no, good good gracious, no. Um, I, I, I don't think that uh, that would be a big enough of an upgrade, because I don't think that was much of an upgrade to begin with. But um, I don't know. I mean, like I, my experience with the camera on the iPhone 4S has been outstanding. Um, it's pretty much become my point and shoot of choice. Um, but I think that, uh, you know, for the iPad 3, um, I don't know. I, I always kind of feel like Apple has always sort of, um, they've kind of played like the, you know, the smart dog in the yard in a way when it comes to new you know, features and stuff on their products because you've got two dogs sitting in a yard with an electric fence. The dumb one is always going around finding out where they're going to get shocked, and the smart dog sits there and watches and learns and says, okay, I'm not going to go over there. Um, I think Apple's always kind of done the same thing with that, and um, I think, you know, with all the new 3D technology with phones and screens and, and you know, that kind of thing, I just... Um, I think Apple's going to wait on that. I think there was a lot of speculation about that with the iPad 3 as far as whether it was going to have 3D screen or something like that, and I just don't yeah. see them really hitting on that until it becomes more mainstream. Yeah. It will be interesting because if they do double that resolution, you start talking about apps and games and, and books that can take advantage of that, so now you're going to have this deal where you know, it's like the iPhone where you've got, well, this this app will run on a 4, but not on a 3. And I suspect there's going to be some weird thing that has to happen with with apps and, and books because you're going to have games now, for example, that have assets like icons and, and just graphics that have to have two versions for every, you know, for every, for every title. So I don't know if those game sizes are just going to double all of a sudden or, or even go higher than that. Or if they're going to have to clamp down and say, okay, well, these are the these are the iPad three games or apps, and these are the you know one and two. I mean, I can definitely see that. I mean, I would say that a lot of that comes from you know how fast the processor is, as well as you know what resolution those graphics are going to be rendered at, and that'll determine which version, I guess, of the tablet you know they'll allow it to be played on. Um, but I mean. Some of the games that I see on the iP on the iPhone right now um, are pretty advanced as far as what um, you know quality of graphics they're putting out there. I mean, as we all know, um, uh, what is it, Infinity Blade and Infinity Infinity Blade Two? Um, yeah. I mean, amazing, amazing graphics. Um, so it would definitely be interesting to see how those look on something like the iPad Three with its rumored. Um, you know, Retina right display at that size, but you know, I'll be honest. The majority of what I do on my iPad too is, you know, answering emails, uh, reading, uh, you know, whether it's e-magazines or e-books, and uh, you know, playing a couple of games here and there, as well as your occasional, you know, Angry Birds. But I mean, for the most part, um, I don't really see it being like a hardcore gamer device until. They have processors that can handle that kind of, you know, right capacity. Until it comes out with World of Warcraft for the <laughs> iPad, I just don't see it happening. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I, don't I can never iPad yet because it doesn't do too much more than my iPhone can, you know, can't already do. So I just bought a pair of five dollar reading glasses from the dollar store, and I pretend it's an iPad. 
There you go. <laughs> that brings up a good point, though, Christian, because you're doing a lot of wedding work. Are you uh, doing, or do you see people doing slideshows, and, and are people using iPads for those, or data I haven't kind of seen, things? I haven't seen that yet. In theory, it sounds great, and I've, I've really wanted to do slideshows at weddings for ages. Um, when it comes down to it, I just haven't been able to to make it actually connect. But yeah. I mean, actually, for the slideshow thing, I, that was something that I used to do at weddings a lot, you know, using my MacBook Pro, um, because I would shoot with a 1D Mark III, and my um, little SD card would copy, like, small JPEGs on there, and I would just have my assistant go through those and then create a slideshow using the screensaver feature on the Mac um, just by using the folder on the card once the images have been polished up. Um, but the nice thing about it being on a laptop, it's a little more conspicuous if someone tries to run off with your laptop, especially if you set it in a high traffic area. Whereas with an iPad, um, you know, it's just it's a little bit easier to conceal, in my opinion. You know, mm -hmm. just one of those things. It's definitely a cool idea. You know, and you could easily have done the same thing with a Kodak photo frame, but oh, they're not making those anymore. So <laughs> I got one. I'll sell you for free. Uh, yeah, I think I got one too. You can have it. <laughs> I, I, it's got to have one of those really like clunky gold frames to it. It can't be uh, you know, no. black. Mine's, it's mine's got to grab, grab the attention. Yeah. Uh, well, if you guys are just joining us or you're watching the recorded version, um, this is Photog TV episode 17, I believe. And uh, it's about quarter after 12. We're coming up on now. And we're talking some photo news. And our special guest, Maria, will be here probably around 1230 or so was, was what she told us. So we're kind of hashing through some news stories. One story I did want to get you guys' opinion on, and I, I put a blog post up about this recently, was there's been a lot of flack lately about the uh, terms of service that Pinterest has. So um, to give you a little background, everyone's kind of talking about Pinterest now and the fact that you can uh, share and engage with others, these kind of uh, things that interest you. And uh, some people have gone and looked at their terms of service and found that it's really kind of weird. It, it actually says that for any content that you share there you either have to a own it so it's like your own content or b you have to have a license to to share that content and that pretty much nullifies most people that share stuff on there because i know a lot of people don't have a license to 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 share you know their favorite dress or their, their or their their drinks that they found that they like or, or whatever so uh i wanted to get you guys to take on it if you've actually messed around with pinterest i have an account there with one post and that's just it links right back to my blog post about it. So that's, that's all I've used it for. So right then and there on his first attempt, Eric is a self-promoter. That's Pinterest. right. The very first thing <laughs> as I slam on Pinterest. <laughs> um, I don't, Christian, you have any experience with Pinterest so far? You know, I, um, I signed on just to see what all the hubbub was about. And it is really cool, but I, I agree with Eric. It, it's really not um, – it's kind of taboo to really be a self promoter on there. And that's what their terms of service are saying. You really have to be just promoting your own stuff. And I don't think that would fly very well with the Pinterest community. Um, and I, I saw Eric had posted too about how people find you on there. I hate the way they set up, you know, as soon as you sign up, you automatically friend like everybody that you know on Facebook and Twitter automatically. Oh wow. And, and it lets them know that you're on there. So they start finding you. And I really hated that about it. But besides that, it really is slick. I mean, it's got some really slick features to it. So have you been using it then, Christian? You got some stuff up there? Yeah, I do. I probably have uh, maybe a dozen or two things on there, um, mainly like house building things and ideas I've seen from other people. And uh, But I've seen some photographers use it as like blatant self-promotion. You know, here are some of my favorite images from last year. And it, it I mean, I haven't really seen anybody say anything negative about it. So yeah. But, I mean, the way their terms of service are written, that's pretty much the only way you're supposed to use it. Well, yeah. So according to their terms of service, you have a license. You should either own or have a license to all those things that you've shared, uh, which just kind of really conflicts with its own kind of reason for being. If they want you to share things, but you must you must own the things you share or, or have a license to share those. Perhaps the workaround is by instead of going to individual, individual websites and pinning stuff from those sites, just use Google Images to find it and you know and when the the picture pops up on Google Images when you click on it which is overlaid on um, the website underneath it before it clicks to that just use the um, just use the URL from the Google Images 
uh, into. Uh, there's Jen. How's it going? <laughs> Hi. I've been trying to figure this out for a while. But I... Okay. Well, we're glad you could make it. We're we're discussing Pinterest right now and the terms of service and all Favorite. that stuff. So, all right. Well, we have another opinion on it then. But yeah, I was going to say just use the Google Images tool, and that way, if they are asking about you know whether or not you have. Uh, you know, ownership to this copyrighted material, just refer them over to Google because Google's got a much bigger legal staff than I do. So if there's any issues with it, I would just say just do that. But yes, I have used it to promote my own images. And like it says in the terms of service, it sounds like that's what you're supposed to do anyways because you're not really supposed to be pinning stuff on there that you don't have permission to pin. Um, but like Christian was saying earlier, it's one of those things where you know, they say they frown upon it. So um, I've used it for... Um, maybe getting ideas for future photo shoots and stuff. Um, just kind of like, oh, I like this location or I like this outfit or I really like this makeup job they did on that model. But the other half of what I'm doing is I'm just pinning stuff from my website, especially because brides are really big on Pinterest getting ideas for their own weddings. So I'm pinning images from my own site that have my watermark on them. And then sure enough, about five minutes later, I'll have somebody who is a bride or maybe another photographer repinning the work that I pin from my own website. And so it's kind of virally spreading from there. So I think it's one of those things where, you know, I, I can definitely see the viral marketing potential from it. But at the same time, I definitely think that it's going to be um, something where down the road we're going to see a much more news about Pinterest. And it may not always may not be in like the best light. So we'll see. Yeah. What, what about you, Jen? How are you? I'm, I'm, I'm guessing you probably are into Pinterest on some level, or, or not? Oh, I'm, I'm an addict. <laughs> I love, I love Pinterest. Um, what I love about it is that um, I don't have to bookmark everything anymore. I use it more as a bookmarking tool um, for a lot of inspiration, that sort of thing. And that's why during this whole legal situation, I'm just kind of, I'm not deleting any of my boards. I'm kind of waiting to see what happens, how this kind of all unfolds. Um, because to me, in my mind, I see it simply as that, as a bookmarking tool. I don't see it as, you know, stealing anybody's images. I'm not using them for any sort of profit. Um, it's, for me, strictly inspiration for my clients. It's inspiration. And it also gives me a good idea as to what's trending in terms of fashion. Uh, what are women repinning? What are they going to want want to wear to a portrait session? What are brides, uh, you know, repinning? What's where's their taste level, basically, um, and and what are they concentrating on for their weddings or even for their portrait shoots? So for me, I think it's a, a fantastic tool, and I really hope it doesn't go the way of Napster. It's interesting though. So you're using it as your own personal bookmark, not so much a a way to, to share bookmarks with friends? Is it, is it more like your own personal collection? Absolutely. Stuff? Absolutely. Um, I've created a couple boards for inspiration for some of my clients, but even for myself, I mean, there's a lot of things that I will find, um, especially for recipes. I use it a lot for that because I do a lot of cooking at home um, with my husband. So I do that a lot. And I've got a lot of you know people following that board because I'm like, oh, I'm going to cook that at some point. I can't do it this week. But if I don't repin that, I will never find it again, and it'll drive me nuts. So um, basically, I just I use it, yeah, as a bookmarking tool. What about your husband? Is he into it at all? <laughs> um, well, it's funny because he'll he'll kind of look over my shoulder and he's like, oh, I should start an account, but shh, don't tell anybody. You know, <laughs> like, that's because he thinks it's a total like girly thing. Um, but. Yeah, I mean, he likes it as well, and sometimes I'll just tell him, hey, you know, if you're putting together a meal plan for the week, just head over to my Pinterest board and, and check it out, because um, we'll just pull it up on the iPad, and, and that's also really helpful, too, is when I'm in the kitchen, I can just pull it up directly from that site through my Pinterest board onto my iPad, and I don't have to write anything down, I don't have to print it out, it's just convenient. Yeah, it's like the new... Uh... What was it, Dustin? Like delicious or those bookmarking services from? Like, oh, uh, dig five... this and yeah, it's like your own personal bookmarking thing. Well, I mean, it definitely um, has a lot of appeal. I think in the scrapbooking market because um, you know one of the biggest demographics I see using it, uh, and I don't have any statistics to back this up, but um, you know, there's a huge uh, mommy blogger you know universe out there, and mm -hmm. I 
a, a lot of the people that are following me on Pinterest, as well as the people that I follow on Pinterest, are people that, um, you know, maybe they are work at home moms. Do not call them stay at home moms. They are work at home moms. And, um, you know, some of them have uh, food blogs. You know, they are coming up with recipes all the time, and they're really well known uh, for these food blogs that they produce. Um, other people are, you know, they're mommy photographers, but they also do a lot of like do it yourself home decor and crafts and, you know, anything else that might be of interest to their readers. And, um, you know, they're on there um, all the time using, you know, Pinterest as a means to get ideas, collaborate, um, you know, inspire themselves as well as each other. And, you know, I think that it was really slick marketing on Pinterest's part um, to kind of make it like a, a true digital version of like an inspiration board because mm -hmm. you've got everything out in front of there, at, you know, that you've pinned, but on top of it, you're getting all this feedback and input from other people that you follow as well. Um, I also really like the fact that you can select what boards from other people uh, on Pinterest that you can follow. So that way you're not over diluting the, you know, input that you're receiving from the people that you follow because maybe you're not quite interested in gardening. So you can unfollow their gardening board and only follow their photography board or their food board. Um, but you know, copyright as well as um, intellectual property rights and stuff. I think it's always been a real gray area when it comes to, you know, legal speak and um, anybody who creates a service or a product that dabbles in that area, I think is always going to be subjected to um, this kind of speculation. So that's interesting because they've, I've never heard of a social network saying or any kind of online service saying that you must have the rights to everything that you share. I mean, well, if, if that if that had to be the case, I mean, if you look at like Facebook or Google what about Plus YouTube? Or, You're yeah, not YouTube, technically yeah. supposed to upload copyrighted yeah. material. I mean, I think YouTube's busiest day out of the year was the day after the Grammys, and basically taking down all the videos people had uploaded from their favorite yeah. clips from the Grammys, um, especially with um, what was it uh, that really terrible performance by what's her name with the the priest. Thing. Oh, uh, 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 um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think I we all know who we're talking about. about. I, can't her name, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> if you if about you her. saw it, you'd be just as disturbed, and you'd want to unburn it from the back of your eyes. So, um, but... are you talking about the Mi Nicki Minaj thing? That's yes, the that one. Okay. That's what it was. Okay, I was confused. I knew there was a Minaj in there somewhere, but I didn't <laughs> want to say it because I was like, maybe that's not the right word. I don't remember. Um. But uh, Christian, you were saying something about uh, taking over the rights to the picks of the terms in their terms of service. Is that what you were saying? It seems like I saw that in their terms of service that basically by posting on there, you were giving them and their successors and assigns and arrears and whatever else the um, actual rights to the pictures. Have you? Uh, you yeah, that's right. Terms of service better than I have. Yeah, that's right. It does say that you give them, I mean, it's a standard legal thing. You give them in perpetuity, the blah, 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 to license, resell, reshare, uh, do whatever with, you know, the, it's just so weird. I mean, even if, how could, how could I give them that license if I post a picture of, you know, a Coca-Cola can? I, I don't, it just doesn't make any sense. And I think what we're getting towards eventually is some sort of clarification from them because it's just, it just doesn't make any sense. And it's, uh, it's confusing. I mean, like most photographers have to, to deal with the idea that we're giving them a license to do stuff with our images and they're, yeah, they're probably never going to sell some little, you know, 600 by 600 image. But this other part about saying that we, we have to have that license to give them and, and that we're representing that we do is, is something else entirely. So I think there'll have to be some clarification. Well, I, I think that, you know, you had said it in your blog post on, uh, on your website, Eric, about it when you posted the article, but you know, it is a, I think it's a overbearing, you know, cover your ass policy, um, by Pinterest trying to make sure that, you know, they're just protecting themselves on the back end, um, which makes it, you know, extremely difficult for anyone to actually follow through with using their service because, everybody using it is basically just stealing images from websites and whatnot, you know, for the whole purpose of collaborating it all together on, on Pinterest itself. Um, it's like I said, it's, it's still in its infancy. I think, I think I started using it about a year ago and um, mm -hmm. I was kind of, you know, 
just checking in on it once in a while, but then, you know, over the past couple of months, it's really exploded, especially since they started letting in more people and directly integrating it with Facebook. Now people are just attaching all their friends to like their account, like Christian was talking about when they first log in. So now everybody's, you know, all connected to each other. Um, but, uh, it's like I said, I, I don't, um, there's a big difference like if you're a wedding or a portrait photographer and you're just wanting to promote your own stuff because you know like eric said in his post you know it's your potential income from doing a job for a retail customer is pretty much <clears throat> all encapsulated once that job is completed there's really not much more money you're going to make from that client for family portraits or a wedding or whatever um you know once those images are done they're done um, whereas with commercial photographers, especially stock photographers, this is where I definitely see it being a huge issue. I see that, um, you know, someone's work is getting spent all over Pinterest, spun around, and that poor photographer is either in threat of losing uh, any potential revenue off that image because now everybody's got a copy of it on their Pinterest board. All right, so on that, here's a funny note. So Getty and Corbis, like two big stock online sites, and I think iStockphoto as well, have started pinning their their images on some images on Pinterest, which is really, <laughs> really confusing because that's like, great. So Pinterest can now resell those, even though they're small JPEGs, but sell those files as, as stock images, the, the Pinterest stock library, I guess. Oh, my gosh. I wonder if it's going to ha still have the the – the cross X I stock photo. Yeah, that's right. Which version of, of it did they? I have to see which uh, <laughs> which version of they posted on there. But if you go on Pinterest and search for them, you'll you'll find those images. Gosh. Well, let's do one more story real quick. Uh, hopefully, before Maria jumps in here, has anyone played with that new um, Smug Mug camera app that just came out like a day or two ago? Has anyone checked that out? Um, I just downloaded it. Um, I haven't had a chance to really analyze like the quality of the pictures and stuff, but um, I will say the interface is pretty slick. Um, they definitely are trying to, uh, you know, some people said that they're trying to definitely go after the Camera Plus uh, app. Um, I can definitely see that. Um, but as far as the, um, the interface goes and everything, um, it's fairly simple to use. Um, but I think really where the potential for it um, increases is if you go into the settings mode and go to um, uh, the backup section they have the export to camera roll which is directly onto your phone there's also the cloud archive which um, if you're not aware of this smug mug um, which is you know the company that made the, the app um, have a very large uh, image backup service called you know their cloud service or their cloud archive and pretty much for um, a nominal annual fee they will back up uh, quite a bit of your images I, I, I don't know if it's unlimited or not but um, so I, I think really where the potential of this lies is the fact that now you've got an app specifically designed to not just take pictures and manipulate them like you know Instagram or whatever but to automatically back them up to their servers for the potential of you making prints from them in a much more seamless fashion. Um, where I really see a lot of potential coming from this app is once the images are backed up to SmugMug's servers, uh, having the ability to actually, uh, through your app, order prints from your phone. That's where I see a big money maker. Oh. And I think, you know, if, if Smug Mug is watching this and they steal my idea, if they haven't already planned it, I do expect a commission check. Um, but I have a feeling that this was probably part of the works. I, under, I purposely think that um, the reason why this app is free is to enable people to take a bunch of pictures and then eventually decide, um, oh, you know what, I do want a Smug Mug account, which you do have to pay for. Um, and I want to use their cloud backup service. Um, and, oh, yeah, you know, I want to go ahead and order prints that I've taken from my phone. Um, because up until now, unless I'm wrong, the only uh, app that I've known where you can actually order prints from your phone, I think, is Walgreens. So huh. unless there's any other ones out there. That's interesting. So they, they're, it, if not one of the first or at least one of the, the more notable examples of companies that have the ability to not only produce an app, but have the back end of, of a print lab 
it would be the equivalent of like White House Custom Color or Miller's or any of those other kind of photo labs coming out <clears throat> with their own photo app and, and tying it into that to that service. And I think it would be kind of cool. I mean, who's to stop them from say, you know, you run your app, you take a bunch of pictures and then every so often it pops up and says, hey, we're running a special on prints this month. Just click right here and we've, we've got all your images ready to go. Tell us what you want um, and, and print from there. That's a, hmm. a pretty unique thing. I don't think that we've seen yet from uh, app providers. I think the, the only thing out there um, that, you know, I was pretty pleased to see <clears throat> on the latest uh, updates from iOS 5 was when uh, Google, or I'm sorry, not Google, whoa, let me take that back, when Apple uh, introduced the iCards uh, app where you could take a picture from your phone and then put it onto a, um, a template to show, like, what kind of greeting card you wanted to send somebody, and then Apple would actually send out a greeting card from you know, the, their print lab directly to whoever, whatever address you programmed into, uh, into iCard. So, and it would use your, um, iTunes account, uh, to bill you for sending out that card as well as the postage. Um, plus the other neat thing that I thought was kind of cool was you'd get a push notification letting you know, once the card got mailed. So that's cool. Sure. Ron in the chat room is saying that the Photoshop.com app <clears throat> allows ordering of prints, and I'm I'm guessing he's referring to the um, the iOS app um, allows that, which is that's cool. I haven't haven't messed around with that. I that hmm, that's cool though. I like the idea of that that additional service because not it's definitely something that bigger companies could do to compete with um, developers like Camera Plus that have gotten really successful. Uh, for their ability to to develop apps, but don't have the infrastructure to support um, printing or products based on those images. Basically, yeah, pretty much any product based on those images. Um, but yeah, I haven't, I haven't played around with the Smugmug Mac app actually. But uh, I saw that um, Jack Hollingsworth was talking about it, and um, it looked like from the pictures that they have the general selection of. Instagrammy kind of filters that you can do like in your photo frames with the little oh the little sprocket hole things on like a 35 millimeter on the side to let everyone know that this is a picture that you've taken or something as if that if you, you need that to show that um, but I like the way it looked as far as setting your focus and your exposure separately um, and giving you some indication of that. All right. Well, um, I just got a notification from Maria saying that she is ready to join the Hangout. So, Eric, if you would send her the invitation. Let's see. Do that real quick. It's like you did circle her, didn't you? <laughs> Let me look. Well, she's showing up in my list of people to invite um, in, as far as the page goes. Let's see. Invite. So she should get an invite from the page. I will say one yeah. thing about the Camera Awesome app, if, I've, if you've got a minute while you're Yeah, inviting. please, go ahead. It's, it, I read that it will take up to nine frames per second, so that's pretty impressive for the, for the wow. iPhone camera. Um, but I just tried I downloaded it this morning. I hadn't really messed with it, so while you were talking, I was messing with it. It's really, really slow when you, when you try to awesomeize it. They've got like a, some kind of functionality. Now, is the app. awesomeizing the actual applying of a filter? Is that what they're yeah. calling it? Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, it's really slow. I took one little picture, and it, it probably took 30 seconds to awesomeize. Wow. And you're on a 4S? Uh, no, it's the 4. 4. Still, that's pretty Still, that's, long. Yeah, that's a long time. OK. Uh, Eric, would you try and send her the invitation again? Yeah. <clears throat> I, okay, she said that she um, she circled our brand page, so her photo And not the, page. Not, the, uh, not the account, but the page. I think so. I mean, I'm, I'm seeing her in the list. Uh, as far as there it goes, invite. Her name's showing up when I type it, so I think that means she's there. She there is. she is. You know what? I like the word awesomeize too. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty cool name for a for a camera app. <laughs> There's Maria. Hi. Hi you guys. Hi Maria. How are you Hi. doing? I'm good. I just walked off the set and thought I'd um, come join you. This is my first official um, interview on air. 
Oh wow! It's usually the other <laughs> usually the other way around. See now the I'm, camera's pointed at you. <laughs> yeah, so I'm a little nervous as usual. <laughs> Well, uh, welcome to the show, everybody who is watching this. Um, and Eric, you can go ahead and open it up, I guess, for the, yeah, for the sure. broadcast. Um, this is Maria. And Maria, would you actually help me pronounce your last name? Sure. It's Quibon. Quibon. She, okay. Quibon. Yeah, that was pretty good. That was good. Thank you. I mean, being from Texas, I would naturally say Quibon, but, you know, I just wanted to make sure yeah. I was saying it right. So. A lot of people think I'm Latina, um, but I, I'm, I grew up in Honolulu, so I kind of pull whichever... Uh, nationality or culture, you know, whether it's Asian, I'm Filipino mix, really, I'm chop suey. But, <laughs> <laughs> and a little Spanish, too. But yeah, I like so, to say I'm chop suey. So, um, Maria, I noticed somebody posted a picture of you from a hangout that you just left. Um, yes. Who was your special guest, if you would please tell us? We had two guests this morning, actually. We had a great time with Peter Gallagher. I don't know if you're familiar with him. He's mm -hmm. an actor, a singer. Um, he was in one of my favorite movies way back in the day called Sex, Lies, and Videotape. And he was the nicest, nicest guy. You could not meet a nicer person. And, um, you know, as we continue to use Google+, Plus, a lot of the celebrities that, that come through um, our new set, Good Day LA, and then we ask them to hang out with us on our, our Hangout. They're not really quite familiar with the Google Plus Hangout, but as soon as they understand the concept, they're just so warm and they love talking to everyone on the screen. It's just, it's so fantastic. We're having so much fun with it. I know I am. <laughs> yeah. Well, and actually that's kind of how, um, for everybody who's watching, that's how Maria and I first met was when um, uh, a group of us got the on-air feature rolled out. Um, we all decided to go ahead and circle each other so that way we could network with one another and kind of glean information from one another. And um, of course, the I think the first hangout I participated uh, with you in was when Matt Atchity was your guest yes. from Rotten Tomatoes. He'll be back here tomorrow if you want oh, to come back. <laughs> well, yeah, definitely. In fact, he uh, the episode that he was in was uh, I had asked him specifically about going to see the latest Studio Ghibli movie. Um, the Secret World of Arietti, because my daughter and I were going to go see it, and he loved it, and I loved it, and of course, you know, my daughter made me go out and buy every Studio Ghibli DVD since then. But of um, it's very expensive. <laughs> but they are, they are good for those of you uh, Disney Pixar fans. Um, so uh, Maria, we've been doing some homework on you, and um, definitely uh, wanted to talk a little bit more about um, you know what you do currently with Fox, but also, you know, this project you've got going on with Mommy Loves Tech and everything you've been doing with that, um, especially like, you know, going to Vegas at CES and all that fun stuff. So um, That what, was fun. I was going to say, so why don't you start a little bit, just kind of let us know, like, where you started and, like, how you got to where you are now. Sure, sure. Um, well, I am originally from Honolulu, like I said, and I have always been interested in technology to a certain degree. You know, I, I'm not going to tell you like how to um, write programs or write code or anything like that, but I'm just naturally curious about gadgets and things. And I think that probably came from my dad. Um, I remember being a little girl and he brought the, the first big computer home. It was this huge IBM. Remember the, back in those days? And you had to write, um, I can't remember, run, and the thing would run, and you have a happy, smiley face, was like the first thing I, I did, and it took me forever to do that. But but anyway, I'd always been interested in technology, and but I'd also always been interested in television. I remember very early on as a little girl, I think I was five years old, and I was watching Sesame Street, and I was watching TV, and there was a woman on the air, her name was Maria. I don't know if you guys ever watched Sesame Street. And do you remember oh, Maria? Yeah. She was, uh, she was the first really dark-haired, uh, dark-featured woman that I had seen that I kind of related to, and I thought, wow, that is the neatest thing. And I had always wanted to be on television after that, and I didn't know exactly what route. And then I went to college, and um, I started uh, toying around with the broadcast department, the broadcasting department, and I just got interested in news. And um, I met somebody while I was still in school who said, hey, Maria, we are looking for somebody to do the weather. This was in Hawaii. And I said, the weather? I, I never really thought about that. And um, I remember going in and I hung out with the National Weather Service, the people from there. And I just got really interested in the weather. And just ra being raised in Hawaii, I was 
really exposed to a lot of weather and I just didn't know, but I was very interested in it after all. And I, I did study for my degree in meteorology. So I do have a broadcast meteorology, uh, can't even say it, meteorology degree. Um, <laughs> So, and, and I get to work with all these fancy computers and build graphics, and so that kind of fed my my um, my fascination with technology and computers. And so I have been doing the weather for hmm, the last, I guess, fifteen, almost fifteen years. It's a long time. I hate to say that, I'm aging myself. <laughs> but, um, I was going to ask you really quick, though. I mean, being a meteorologist in Hawaii, you know, I've been to Hawaii, and it seems like the forecast is pretty much the same every day. It's 83, <laughs> partly cloudy, with 30% chance of rain every single everyone day. Sa everyone says that, too, to me as well about Southern California, and I joke that I wanted to have an easier job forecasting weather in Hawaii, so I came to L.A. to forecast weather, because <laughs> there really is no weather uh, here in Southern California. But, no, you'd be surprised. Hawaii's got like 12 out of the 16 climate zones. I don't know if I have that figure right, but it's something like, I mean, we have such varied w weather patterns in Hawaii. We have snow up in the mountains, up on the big island. We have high surf. We have rain every single day. We get severe weather in Hawaii, even some tornadoes, um, hurricanes. I've lived oh, through no. two. Yeah, I've lived through two hurricanes in my lifetime in uh, Honolulu. And so there's actually quite a bit of weather to forecast in Hawaii in many different microclimates. Now, Maria, were, um, you, were you there when um, when that uh, uh, tsunami was coming through, or did you already move no. to L.A. by then? No, yeah, I'd been here, uh, I've been here now for, since nine, 12 years. Okay. It's been a long time. Yeah, I've been here for 12 years, and I did three years of weather in Honolulu prior to that. No, but I have still uh, lots of my friends and family um, in Honolulu, so that was a scary time um, during that tsunami. Ended up, you know, not being as bad as it could have been, certainly not like what they saw in Asia, but um, two hurricanes I lived through, Hurricane Eva and Hurricane Iniki, and that's crazy. And then here in Southern California, I've been very fortunate that I haven't, I mean, I've stopped, there's been a few earthquakes, but nothing like what they saw in Northridge um, at that time. So... Um, yeah, the, the tsunami, no, that, that was scary for my friends and family, definitely. Yeah. So now you're in Los Angeles, and obviously you've gotten much more front row access to a lot of well-known uh, celebrities and, and personality types and, and whatnot. So how, how long have you been, um, had the opportunity to sit down with people of you know, this caliber and, and get to know them on a personal level? It's so exciting, my job, because I came here to do the weather um, originally. And, you know, our business, I don't know, it's just across the board, really, all of the news stations, our business and broadcasting in general, in general has changed so much. And we now wear so many different hats. And so it's really fun, actually, the fact that I can do weather on most days. But on other days, it kind of, it started evolving, and I started doing the more lighthearted news and then entertainment. And then all of a sudden um, I started anchoring the news and filling in for people. Um, and then I moved from the evening news to the morning and then the morning is really uh, so much more informal and it's a six hour news block really, if you think about it, from 4.30 to 10.30. And so we get to do all kinds of things, not just the one job that we were kind of sort of trained to do. And so in terms of being able to uh, interview celebrities, I've been kind of in and out for the last, I'd say, four years, three, well, three years, really. This is my third year on the morning show. And this is where we have the Good Day LA show, where all, most of the celebrities come on. And um, yeah, it's been really, I, I get starstruck all the time thinking about walking down the hallway and seeing, I think it was George Lucas who was here once. Um, and I thought, oh my God, what is, you know, <laughs> what is going on? And he was here promoting his small independent movie one time. And, and I just thought, wow. So some of my, the people that I looked up to, or at least idolized, um, yeah, I get to see in the hallways. It's really, it's really interesting. I love my job. <laughs> really I would think most people would. <laughs> yeah. Just the hours are, are kind of a killer. 
um, the hours now are really tough. So waking up at 3 a.m. is a little hard. And especially with a one-year-old, I can definitely especially with a baby. Yeah, I can imagine how um, you know trying to sneak out of the house without waking him up. Yeah, know, and apparently I apparently I did that this morning. Oh. My husband. Yeah, he texted me and he said, "Ah, uh, as soon as you walked out the door, the baby was up and crying." So I was like, "Oh no." So. Yeah, I think I think babies get like a sixth sense about when mommy leaves mm -hmm. the house because it happens on a regular basis in our home too. As soon as my wife leaves to go teach, um, even yes. though it's technically before the kids are awake, that's when my son wakes up crying. So See, yeah. with us, it doesn't matter how quiet we are in our house. It's the starting the car and opening the garage door. It's, it, that's what I gets might, as, might as well park down the street. <laughs> but see what you need Eric is like we've got French doors that go from our master bedroom to uh, the carport outside so my wife has now taken to sneaking out through the master bedroom basically like climbing out the window especially oh, yeah. to get to the car <laughs> to not disturb the kids before they wake up so it doesn't always work though yeah <laughs> Jen, do you have kids Jen no not yet not uh, yet, not yet. Yeah. <laughs> just uh, <laughs> about the there... one year uh, anniversary with my husband oh, uh, well, congratulations. Month. so we're, we're waiting at least a year <laughs> oh well um, so. yeah the photography for you guys when I mean I have thousands of pictures on my iPhone of the kid and um, so yeah once you have a baby my god you're always gonna be yeah. <laughs> so. no you won't be but your parents will be telling you to take more pictures yeah they're like <laughs> what they want pictures of those grandkids that's right that's right that's right. Um, speaking of um, the baby, you know, originally we had thought of the show just kind of like a tech chick show. And when my husband and I, um, when we, when I found out that I was pregnant, um, it, my, the, the show and the content we were building evolved into Mommy Loves Tech. And that's how it came to be and realized that there was kind of a vacuum for um, resources for, for moms and how to make their lives easier with technology. There's a lot of blogs that are out there that we realized, but not as many in terms of shows. Mm -hmm. So um, so that's how Mommy Loves Tech kind of came about. You know, Maria, I was just thinking about this. Um, maybe for the next go around for next year, there's a big mm -hmm. conference in Nashville called Blissdom. Oh. And, um, and there's also, I think, one in California and San Diego called Blog Her that mm -hmm. happens every year and actually the blog her conference happens in like four or five different cities or, or throughout the year and each one focuses on a different area of uh, work at home moms but um, I would definitely um, I'll try to connect you with Allie Worthington she's the uh, head of the Blistem conference and I would think especially with the blog and the followers and stuff that you have you know they would definitely like to hear what you have to say about that kind I of thing so definitely be interested in, in um, going to all those actually yeah. that's yeah and CES was the first time that uh, um, that I went to this past year and it was so much fun and there was so much to see and I, I was there for two days and I wish I was there for the whole entire week uh, what, it was exciting. what kind of like when you're at CES what what kind of the uh, what was the mindset there as far as like tech for people with you know uh, new families or newborns or whatnot did you see anything particular yeah. to that apparently there is now I think for the last two years there's a section of CES called um, I forget what oh, now I forget what it's called but it's anyway it's dedicated to moms um, it's called oh it's called mommy tech that's what it's called and um, it's actually grown from what I've heard and it caters to a lot of the mom and the mom bloggers and moms in general um, with what's available for them. I mean, this year we we did a bunch of stories on everything ranging from things you attach to your kid's shoes so that it can monitor their um, physical activity because, you know, we have such a high obesity rate in our children across the country. So um, that was one thing we featured. And also, of course, to the tablets and and whatnot for the little children, because um, you know, they're all, my son already at one is always grabbing at mine, my <laughs> iPad, and is just drooling all over it. So we've we went and covered new tablets that are just for kids that are water submersible or at least water resistant. Um, so yeah, it's fascinating how that market. Now here's something that I didn't realize that after doing some research about moms and technology. In your household, I don't know if it's like this in your household, but moms have 
let's see, 85% of the time make all the big purchasing decisions in your household. Yep. 85, that's pretty big. And I heard that that's actually kind of generous. They just say 85 just to let the, the guys feel like they're making some kind of decision because some say it's more yes yeah, so some say it's more like 95 percent and when it comes to consumer electronics and whatnot it's like 65 percent um women being the major decision um having all that uh, decision making power yeah. so it it's definitely really fascinating. In, in a lot of the uh, marketing research that photographers do for running you know like a like mine's a retail business you know doing weddings and portraits that kind of thing mm -hmm. um, it's pretty much almost the the same um, statistics you'll find because you know when a bride comes to my studio to have me shoot her wedding she and her mother are usually the ones that make the decision whether or not they're gonna hire me um, exactly and then you know for family portraits uh, I don't think I've ever gotten uh, an email from a dad saying hey we need to update our family portrait it's almost always coming from the mom so I think it's one of those things where um, you know like you said it's really ironic that there is this um, especially this growing uh, niche mm -hmm. of moms that are interested in technology and mm -hmm. yet um, there's just this huge void when it comes to kind of catering to that niche yeah and when you look at the advertising and the marketing it's all geared for men and you're kind of like oh, wait a minute it should be the other way around and when we were going around ces not just to the mommy tech portion of the conference we just you know we just went to we even went to car parts we went to like a section of ces that dealt with car technology and aftermarket um things and we told them what we were doing we were there for mommy loves tech and they all just lit up and they're like oh my wife she's so into cars she loves all the gadgets in the cars and so they just they they want to be a part of it so we've got a long list of people that we need to go see and and so we can feature their items because i i love to pimp out my ride you know yeah. what i mean i'm a mom but <laughs> i still want to have a cool looking car right you yeah. know actually uh the next car that we bought um which was the 2011 toyota sienna uh, never thought i'd be a minivan owner um mm -hmm. but you know no. we'd gone from a volvo <laughs> yeah i know but we we'd gone from a volvo xc90 which is a great car um one of my friends used to run the dealership here in austin um mm -hmm. really safe vehicles loved all the stuff but when your family's growing um you need a car that can accommodate it and an suv especially with volvos felt kind of cramped as far as mm -hmm. the space that was allowed in there so we have a nine-year-old and we have an infant and which is oh. a huge age gap yes but you've got to have room for your nine-year-old and all of her stuff her stuffed animals or her you know tech or whatever and then you've got my son whose car seat takes up you know his whole half of the car so but the two biggest things that my wife said she had to have in this minivan was a Bluetooth hookup so she could listen to her iP you know, iPod mm -hmm. or iPhone. Sure. And then um, also that it have um, uh, the, the backward facing camera so when she backed mm -hmm. up she wouldn't run over anybody. So, yeah. which is a very big possibility because, you know, she just flies out of parking spaces like a maniac. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Your wife's watching. She's like, no. Nah. No, she's going to beat me over the head later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just saw that um, Jen posted the article on mommy loves tech oh thanks for doing that by the way there's yeah. a there's this article that i wrote on mommylovestech.com about taking uh, professional photographs when you're pregnant and thanks for bringing that up because i did i remember when i was pregnant and i thought ah i don't want i don't feel comfortable you know taking these photographs i'm i'm like seven and a half months pregnant and blah 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 and um it was really the the best thing I, I could have done for myself and my self-esteem, but later on in the future, I could look back on that moment because, you know, you're feeling so bad as a pregnant lady and um, to take those photographs it was really a, a neat experience. Are you guys photographers um, besides you, uh, Dustin, um, Eric, and, and yeah. Jen? Are you photographers? Mm -hmm. yep. Have you? Ha ha do you take um, children and mom photography as well? Do you specialize in family portraits or uh, what do you specialize in? I um, I started with weddings and families, and uh, while I still do a little bit of that, I'm mostly uh, editorial now. Mm, my okay. How about you, Jen? Um, I uh, have done just portraiture mostly, uh, model and actor headshots, along with I'm um, kind of dipping my toe in the senior market now, uh, as well as weddings. So oh, okay. I, I don't really do uh, much in the way of family. I've uh, families, and I've done. Uh, 
I think one maternity shoot and I just realized that wasn't my, my strength. But the ones who do oh, it are incredible. I mean, <laughs> the ones who do find that niche um, and, and stick with it, I've got a lot of respect for them. Yeah, yeah. Um, I could just link some. I'll, I'll look up your bios and I could try to link it. Mm. If you do like the baby photographs and, and, you know, things that deal with family photography, maybe I can put a link to your site. Yeah, that'd be mine. great. Well, yeah, and the, yeah. the funny thing too is that, um, you know, especially because Jenna mentioned seniors and I, and I know, um, I think I'd actually mentioned to you, Maria, the issue that I'd had with Inside Edition back during the summertime. Um, but, um, which by the way, are they a parent company with you guys with Fox Inside Edition? No, I okay. don't, I, I don't think so. Okay. Good. I don't believe so. It no. wasn't a, it wasn't a great experience, but I just didn't want to get uh, you in trouble or anything like that. Oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, no, I don't think. <laughs> okay. But like in the South in Texas, like senior uh -huh. portraits, we're talking like high school seniors where I know uh -huh. it's like, it's not as big of a thing on the West coast. And I've had people say, Wait, so you do portraits of senior citizens or something? Like, no, 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 we're talking about <laughs> high school graduates. So I just, right. for, for those of you out there that are watching on YouTube later, you know, uh -huh. we are talking about, you know, high school senior portraits, which is what Jim was talking about. So. Yeah. They're, they're big here. I think they're big on this side, too. Are oh, they? absolutely. Oh, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. I, my niece um, just took some, actually, oh, and yeah, she looks really, really great. Yeah. Awesome. I think the biggest difference that people have trouble understanding is all of the West Coast photographers that we know have these amazing sunsets and amazing light and amazing locations. And we're like, you know, here in Texas, it's like a thousand degrees and we're burning up. I'm like, oh man, I, just, <laughs> I, I need that, those great, those great locations and that great light out there. Well, and then you've got the Seattle photographers who have this constant overcast, you yeah. know, so they can just shoot at all times That's of the day right. with low contrast. So we yeah. just had um, like a photo walk. I don't know if you're familiar with, mm -hmm. um, is it Trey? Trey yes, Ratcliffe. Trey Ratcliffe. He just had um, a photo walk um, photography uh, event here over the weekend. And the, the clouds were just amazing that day. And I, I saw some of the photos that, because even Shaka, I don't know if you're familiar with Shaka, who's our tech ninja here at Fox 11. And he was able to go out on Sunday and, and the images were just amazing. And he took it with his Samsung Galaxy Note, which I was like, oh my gosh. That was what I was going to ask you guys, because um, we were going to do a story on you know, Kodak going away, filing mm -hmm. for bankruptcy. And I mean, a lot of those consumer or prosumer uh, cameras are going by the wayside because of all of our smartphones. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do you think about the quality of the photographs from, from these things? Could you ever see yourself like using just this and not those fancy, fancy cameras that you guys have? Weren't we just talking about this before Maria got in the Hangout? Oh, <laughs> I think oh so. sorry. I think so. sorry. No, no, no. No, I'm just saying it's it's very coincidental. Um, I, I have the iPhone 4S, and the reason why I upgraded was specifically for the lens in the camera. And um, mm -hmm. people were asking me, you know, well, what's the biggest difference? You know, it looks the same as far as the physical, you know, camera itself or the phone. But, um, you know, there's more enhanced lens optics inside the 4S plus, um, you know, more megapixels. But I mean, the thing with megapixels is you don't necessarily need more, but you just you need a better sensor, a bigger sensor um, that can capture more channels of light with less noise. And, you know, the, the physical glass itself inside the device, is the quality of that is going to directly affect the quality of the pictures. Um, I don't know. What do you think, Eric? Yeah, well, I think luckily for professional photographers right now, there is there are actually some physics laws that kind of prevent a, a camera inside of a phone from doing what we can do with with the DSLR. And, and Dustin hit on some of them. The fact that a sensor inside of a, a 35 millimeter camera is so big, that lets us get a shallow depth of field so that certain things are in focus and everything else is not. And, mm -hmm. and right now on like an iPhone, you can get a really good kind of reproduction of that with some of the apps because they have that sort of filter or mode, but you can't do it from the, just, just out of sheer physics and, until they make those sensors as big as, as what mm -hmm. we get uh, on, on the cameras. And, and the same goes true for uh, the glass and the, and the fact that we have some lenses that are very wide angle and some that are very kind of tight and telephoto and, and the iPhone is just, it's one, you know, it's one thing. Now, I, what, I, what I see a lot of it though is I will see uh, photographers on shoots take iPhone pictures 
as sort of like a kind of a marketing branding thing that they're pushing it out to, to people as a, here's what I'm doing kind of right now kind of a deal. And so that does have, I think on the business side, it does have a, a, a certain benefit to it. But uh, thankfully for now, you know, we, we're not going to be hopefully replaced with a bunch of people with camera phones. But I'm the, just curious, like, do you still use film cameras or is it all the digital format now? Because I, I, I had, when we got married, um, we hired a photographer um, at our wedding a few years ago, and he was a little hesitant to use a film camera, which surprised me. Um, so you were specifically looking for that, you wanted someone to, do, to use film? Yes, and you know what? Looking at our final pictures, I have to say that there is a slight difference. We put them right next to each other, and there's a, a slight difference. So yeah, I well, still there's... appreciate the, the film camera, definitely. There is a generation of people, and I'm one of them, that uh, didn't get started shooting until uh, till digital really kind of took off. And, and yeah. I was just, I didn't want to spend the time and, and take film to get um, to the lab and, and then try to figure out what did I do then and, and how do I improve next time. Um, once digital started, there was a kind of like immediacy to your results and, and, and how to mm -hmm. improve. So. Mm -hmm. That brought up all these new photographers, but yeah, if, if someone came to me and said, you know, we want to shoot this in, this job in film, I would be like, okay, but I'm also going to shoot it digitally because, you know, I just, just haven't. Just in case, uh, yeah. Just in case, I just don't That's trust what, it. And I think he was one of those, but I mean, all of our pictures turned out great, both on the digital side and, and the film side, but I did definitely appreciate um, the ones he took on film. So, Maria, um, just real quick, yes. um, one last thing, you, uh, you had said that you don't have a whole lot of experience, you know, with actual like, you know, uh, photography, you know, things or whatever. But your videos on your website at Mommy Loves Tech sure definitely have a very professional look yeah. to them. You know, it's funny that you say that because um, when you first invited me to this hangout, I wanted my business partner, who is our photographer, um, to be part of the hangout, and I just wasn't able to secure him for this time frame. But he might be a guy um, you, you will want to talk to um, later on in the future, but he uses a DSLR, and I love his camera because it, it looks like a regular camera. It's not a video camera. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Um, but it has this filmalized look to some of our videos. Mm -hmm. And I just love how he makes our house because we shoot that at my house mm -hmm. and he, he kind of makes our house look cooler than it actually is and it's all in the camera. <laughs> but I love that camera that he uses. Um, mm -hmm. But it's a, D, it's a DSLR, is that what you call it? Uh, yes. Yeah. 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 That's, that's what he tells me. And it looks like a, a film camera. But he says a lot of the productions here in um, LA use these cameras now. Yeah. It definitely, uh, just like with uh, when digital first came out for photographers, there was a big boom of photographers getting into the industry because they didn't have to buy film anymore. Yeah. Now, with the video capabilities of these digital SLRs, there's a lot, there's a big boom of people getting into the filmmaking industry now, mm -hmm. basically, uh, you know, on the same concept. So um, I, I am definitely interested to see what shows up at South by Southwest here in Austin this year because, mm -hmm. um, you know, just over the past year or two, mm -hmm. the technology for making mm -hmm. high quality films, ha yes. the cost has come way down come for the cost down. to make it much more accessible. Yeah, the um, only thing we have right now is that the audio is still a little tricky to do. Like he has to do a couple of different things with that mm -hmm. camera in order to get the higher quality um, audio. But mm -hmm. other than that, the look, amazing now i have before we wrap up i have one other question and it's related yeah. to video oh no <laughs> i dustin hope i can knows, answer it the dustin, pressure dustin, no dustin knows where i'm going with this oh. I, i'm very curious what what exactly goes on in a normal day over there at fox 11 because i i went and looked oh, on youtube and i see lots of dancing and lots of yes. singing and yes lots of craziness it Tom looks Hillary. like a fun place to work it is it really is and um i'll just show you really quickly it's it's kind of dark right now um, but this is the newsroom. This is actually where all of the reporters and producers sit. We have a, a news set here where we um, interview um, experts or guests that aren't necessarily in the studio. Um, this is where they sit here and we'll do some of our newscasts from out here. But it's, it's fairly quiet right now. Um, this is, uh, Frances is one of our directors. She's She's just getting in, actually. Hi, Francis. But you Where's see a Tony? Lot of, Tony McEwing, is, he's out. He's out, gone for the day. He races out of here. Wow. Uh, but 
but this is the newsroom and it's fairly empty right now. Um, well, actually, lately it has been this way because, you know, we've been able to, through consolidation and through um, the cameras in the studio are now not manned by people. They're actually through robotics. So there are fewer and fewer people actually in the newsroom these days, at least mm. fewer, much fewer than I'd say five years ago. Mm-hmm. So through automation and consolidation, um, there are just fewer bodies now. So um, uh, talk to a little bit about that as far as like the Hangout thing and how, how did that oh. get started with you guys? How did that come about? Well, um, we have a new uh, news director that came in just last year and he's um, very much uh, tuned into social media and technology and he realizes the reach and engagement that um, we can have through social media. And so he's really starting to implement more um, activity online mm-hmm. and Google, Google Plus in particular. And that was really spearheaded by Shaka, our tech ninja. And, um, you know, rather than just employing Twitter and Facebook, this is obviously Google Plus is um, letting us have a direct engagement with our viewers and not just locally, but globally, really. You know, um, I was going to mention, actually, there was another news station. Yeah, I'm sorry, I was cheating on you guys. Um, that, <laughs> they, that's okay. Uh, hey, were, K- K-O-M-U, um, we yes, love them. Yes, and, um, they actually have their computers on their desk while they're reporting, and you yep. can sit in a hangout and watch them do the live broadcast and then huh. when they're not on camera they will turn and talk to people in the hangout about you know some of the topics they just covered like some of the breaking news stuff like that and so uh-huh. i was i was actually going to ask you guys have you guys uh done something similar to that or is it still right now not, you're just doing something off camera like this um not quite to that degree we would like to um soon we still don't have the capabilities in the studio to do that like we need to upgrade our computers and mm-hmm. also which is supposed to happen actually um in the next couple of months and then also we've ordered some cameras this is according to shaka so as soon as we do that i think we'd like to do more hangouts from in there but as far as incorporating the actual hangout on the air I, i'm not sure if there's still some fcc things or some union rules yeah. that we need to uh so there's this is a union shop so there's a few more hurdles that we would have to go through in order to do that um but that's definitely the part of the plan for the future i'm sure you and, can and Google I'm, it. I'm really excited about it <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm very excited about it well cool well um i would just like to thank you again maria for coming on today i know that you're very busy with what you do all the time and getting up at 3 a.m and all that crazy stuff but we really do appreciate you taking the time to come and join us today yes well thank you thank you for inviting me i was a little nervous because i wasn't sure how i was going to contribute (laughs) to photog.tv but um but I look forward to the next time, and maybe I can get Dennis uh, from Mommy Loves Tech to talk about his photography because he's an awesome photographer. Oh, that'd be and great. F- filmmaker and documentarian as well. So I will hook you guys up for sure. And um, Eric, to answer your question, yeah, we just we have a lot of fun here at Fox 11. At least we try anyway. Um, <laughs> because it's such a long, you know, it's six hours, so we will go crazy. If we want yeah, to if you were just sitting happen. around all day. You- yeah, yeah, yeah. Got to dance a little bit. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Do my dance now. Especially, yeah, on Fri- right. especially on Fridays, you know, we try to yes. really yeah. ramp it up and let loose. We need, we need a loop of Tony doing his Happy Friday dance. Uh, we will get that. We will get that. <laughs> All right, you guys. Thanks so much for inviting me. And, uh, Thank we'll, you. We'll, we'll see you on our Hangouts, okay? Please come join yes, us on our Hangouts. We will we definitely will. do that. Okay. Take All right, care. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you, too. So uh, just to wrap it up again, uh, today everybody, uh, our special guest was Maria Qu- uh, Qu- Quibon, to make sure I pronounce it correctly, from uh, MyFox11 in Los Angeles. Um, and uh, who do we have lined up for next week, Eric? Uh, next week, right now, we are planning to have Kenna Klosterman, who is one of the, uh, you'll see her on Creative Live every time they do something live. And she actually was uh, working there yesterday. They were doing a, uh, a live fashion shoot with a, Phantom camera, which I got the stats right. It was about a hundred thousand dollar camera that does several thousand frames per second. Oh so they were doing some amazing stuff, and hopefully we're going to get her on next week to talk about that plus her work because she does uh, photography on her own as well and has some uh, great images to share. So that's our plan for next week. Awesome. 
Uh, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I know Creative Live is a huge resource for a lot of photographers out there. So this is a, a chance for you guys to get to get up close and personal with one of the people that you know works in the back areas of uh, Creative Live. So make sure you attend uh, next week's episode, um, which you can catch every Thursday uh, at 12 p.m. Central Standard Time, either on our website at photog.tv or here in Google Plus in our Hangouts. Cool. And be sure, if you're watching this um, and you want to be part of the Hangout, be sure to circle our Photog TV page on Google+, which is separate from, there's actually a Photog TV account, but the actual page, uh, if you circle that, that way we can invite you into the Hangout because the page runs the Hangout and the page only sees who the page sees. So if you want to be part <laughs> of it, you got to be got to circle it up. If you want to get some love, you got to give it back. So make That's sure right. you circle us back. All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining us today, and we will see you next week. Take care, everyone. Yeah.